about the benefits of keeping active whilst waiting for surgery. Today we'll be speaking to some people who have experienced them firsthand. They'll share their own stories about waiting surgery, what kinds of movements work for them and how they got started and kept themselves motivated. But before we do, let's talk a little bit about why keeping active ahead of surgery is so important. Exercise in general helps you maintain overall fitness, which will help you now and in recovery. In fact, people who stay active in the lead up to surgery have shorter hospital stays and fewer complications. And the outcome is better too, so you're more likely to be able to get back to the things that you like doing sooner. Exercise can also help you maintain a healthy weight, which helps ease the pressure on your joints, bones and muscles. It also helps relieve stress and improve your mood, which can be really important whilst you're waiting for surgery. If you can keep moving arthritic joints, it's worth giving it a go, even if you have to limit the range of motion. Movement will help strengthen the muscles that support the joint, and it keeps the joint itself more flexible. That added strength and flexibility will begin to improve the pain and function of your joint, which will also help you in recovery. Now let's hear from some people who can speak to the benefits of movement firsthand. When I first got told that I'd developed arthritis in my knee, I was only 23 years old, which to me felt really young. I think arthritis kind of crept up on me. I started having symptoms and just thought it was the normal day-to-day -day things that were happening to you as you get older. I used to get a lot of lower back pain and that kind of morphed into hip pain over the years and it was beginning to affect my mobility and beginning to get increasingly painful um, over quite some time. Having to say to a three-year-old, Daddy, can you do this? And having to say, no. Can you bend down and play these cards with me? No. Can you pick this up for me? No. I know how my life went from cleaning my house in a day to taking almost a week to clean my house because I had to stop in between and rest. I know how it felt not to be able to go shopping. Um, and to think oh, that there was a chance that I could get some of that back was really really, really exciting. Waiting for the operation was, was quite difficult. Between the two knees, I had a two-year wait. And in that time, I knew I had to keep moving. The hospital had a pre-op meeting. I think it was about six weeks before the op. And I remember the senior nurse who was there, the one thing that really stuck with me was she said, do these exercises religiously every day between now and your operation the day after the operation you are going to be flying she said and she was right and I, I took it to heart and I was really conscientious and thank goodness for it. A big thing that I was told and a lot of the reading that I did was the pre-work is almost as important as the post. The stronger you can go into the surgery, the more chance you've got of it being successful. Before the first surgery I wasn't able to walk 10 metres uh, they did the surgery on the worst knee first and that improved my life immensely. I was able to start walking and during that period I strengthened the other knee that hadn't yet been done to the point where when I did my second surgery the recovery time was much quicker. It just showed me how important that exercise was and how much my life had improved simply from just having one knee replaced. Motivation is probably the hardest thing of all, but you know if you don't move, then it will get worse. I've got this one chance to get it right. I'm gonna do everything I can to get it right because if this fails, then I'm, I, what is there next? I went to the gym and the trainers there just set you a programme. So you've got someone who helps you to do it. And then a friend would come and exercise with me and walk with me. I think it's very hard to do it on your own. And you need somebody with you on this journey because it is really, really hard. A lot of the exercises could be done by lying down. And so I would do them in bed, actually. I'd just move the pillows out the way. And it was then really easy to do most of them because they were things like leg raises, lying, lying down, straight leg raises and so on. There are times when you will feel like you just don't want to move and you might get a call from someone to say, hey, let's go walking. And that alone will motivate you to walk. So find a, a walking group, get or even start a group yourself of people who are of a similar ability to you 
and just make it a routine where you do something fun, you do um, walks around the park. It doesn't have to be long walks, but you start off with short walks and build yourself up. And before you know it, you're doing it without realizing and you're exercising in company, you're enjoying it. So you'll continue doing it. I've always tried to bring in exercises just to everyday life. So I might be sat watching the television in the evening and I'll just all of a sudden do a couple of, you know, put a weight on the end of my leg and I'll do a couple of um, lifts for my quad. And you know, that's hasn't taken time away from me, hasn't changed anything. I've just gone and done it or I'll randomly do some squats, you know, whilst I've got a moment. And it's, it's trying to make the exercises not a chore. The most challenging thing about exercising before the surgery is, is obvious, it's the pain. You are in constant pain. The exercises you're doing are for the joint that you're having replaced. So it feels, it feels almost wrong to be trying to exercise on the joint because that's where the pain is. But doing as much as you can, you know is making it stronger. But it is difficult to think, why am I doing this? It's painful. You're, you're almost breaking what your mind's expect. You might, if your brain's saying something's painful, you should then react by not doing it. So you do have to be really quite strong with that and think, oh, this is okay, this is a level of pain I can deal with. And if you can't, then that day you don't do that exercise and you have a go tomorrow or you have a go in a couple of hours. But it's trying to break that thing that pain shouldn't stop me from doing this, if it can't. I was proud of myself for sticking to that regime every day doing the exercises because... Um, I'm like a lot of people, you know, it seems like a good idea and then you just go, can't be bothered today. Mm. You know, so it's all it's always a struggle. I'm not a gym. I've never been a gym bunny or anything like that. So I guess it was. Yeah, it was quite a challenge just to to take notice of that. But there was a lot at stake and I knew that and I knew that I had to take responsibility for myself in that respect. <laughs> I think the best advice would be that it's okay if a day isn't as good. It's okay if something isn't as it should be. And it can, like I said, be a bit of a roller coaster. And one day to the next isn't the same. And not losing motivation over that and not thinking something, you've done something wrong. It's just that that's how arthritis works. That one day it is awful and the next day it's a little bit better. And for different people, it's different. Nothing, no arthritis is the same. No person is the same. So try not to worry about when that happens and just think, okay, tomorrow's a new day, we go again, and the next day's a new day. It's a difficult thing to do, but I think that would be my best advice. After the first surgery, um, the pain levels post-op and just my mobility, uh, I would say would have slowed down my recovery because I hadn't been moving at all before surgery. But when I did the second surgery, I had had eight to 10 months of walking. And I was shocked at the difference that that made in my recovery after the second knee, because I'd, rem I'd strengthened the muscles around the joints that much, that recovering was just incredible in, in comparison to the first surgery. As you can see, there are many ways to stay active while you wait for surgery. So find what works for you and try and make movement a part of your everyday. Remember to consult your doctor if you have any questions, especially if you're unsure how you can exercise with your pain. As you start moving more and more, the pain will improve as well, making it that much easier to keep going. That's the most important thing. Setting small goals and finding the activities that work for you can help you stay on track. You might find it helpful to use the Versus Arthritis Surgery Toolkit Activity Tracker and Advice Booklet. And remember, every little bit helps, so give yourself credit for even the smallest victories. Keep moving and we'll see you next time.